Hey, this is Peter, Vince, and Tom, and this is a uh, deleted scene from episode 102. And we have here on the uh, on your extra, this is the version of the the scene with all the dialogue is written. So technically not a deleted scene. This scene is, is but but the dialogue was all deleted. That's right. As it were. So, uh, so this is, uh, you hear the uh, lovely Jamie Lunar uh, doing her uh, dialogue as scripted. Uh, and, of course, the lovely Bob Odenkirk as well. Uh, it was, yeah, such a fun scene. I, I was actually, because I was there prepping 103, and uh, that night I w- decided to drive over to the location, and there was Michelle McLaren directing the scene. And Bob has a, this is a, another of many epic, it's not a monologue exactly, but it's a, it's not easy, this <laughs> this run he does of dialogue, and he, he does such a great job. It was, it was uh, almost a shame to... To cut it out yeah. and put music on it, but the yeah. musical sequence worked so well, uh, done by Kelly Dixon in the, at one hundred two. It's it's funny because the the version this version is a, is a a really good scene, but without the dialogue, you're more into Jimmy's head for some reason. Oddly enough, yeah, this is all great dialogue you wrote, and of course, uh, and you, you should obviously listen to this without it, the version. Watch it at least once without us talking, so you can hear what they're saying. I'm sure you already have by the time you're listening to us talking now. But you can tell from having watched it, the acting is all great. Uh, we, we didn't cut the dialogue for any reason other than what you just said. In a weird way, you can, you're can kind of more in Jimmy's head not hearing the specifics of what he and the young lady are talking about. It's We know he's into her. We know she seems to be into him. We know he's probably going to get lucky if things keep going the way they are. But he's distracted by these breadsticks being broken in the background. Uh, Such a fun idea to come yeah. up with that. I can't remember who came up with it specifically, but so just the I idea do. that he's, after the skater's legs are broken, that this guy is back there snapping, the snapping sound getting in his head one after the other. And it, it's one of the things that uh, defines, I think, the character at this point is that he doesn't go through what he went through in, in the previous act with Tuco without it having some echo. He's got a little touch, you might even say, of PTSD here. He just saw that this incredible act of violence. He can't just put it behind him (laughs) and of course michelle mclaren did directed the hell out of the scene as as she always does with everything do you think they're using the phantom camera or is it just a regular red for the slow most it's the regular red i'm pretty sure okay i'm pretty sure i don't think they had brought the fan i think the phantom only came in for uh episode 10 yeah i think you're right this young lady is very attractive she was on melrose place uh, among other things she's an excellent actress and again just all the dialogue is missing just, just for getting into Jimmy's head more. When I flew into Albuquerque for episode three, they, uh, I saw her on the plane, and I did, hadn't, whatever, for whatever reason, I hadn't realized we cast her. Huh. Hey, you're here with Vince, Peter, and Tom, and this is a deleted scene from episode 107. What the hell's 107's title? Bingo? Bingo. Bingo. Thank you. Well and we deleted this because Jonathan was so bad in it? Is yes, that why? that's yeah, why. That's, you know. <laughs> I have to cut around this, <laughs> yes. this guy so much. You know, he's learning, though. I, I think he's coming along. I think with a few more years of seasoning. Uh, Once he gets to 50 yeah. years instead yeah, of 47. That's, that's right, exactly. acting profession. <laughs> uh, but seriously, this, this is a scene w- which uh, Jimmy asks for Mike's help in uh, retrieving the Kettleman's money. And it it's amazing to me that it lifted out so beautifully. It lifted out so cleanly. And I got to tell you, a lot of times you, you're watching your, uh, you, you bring your uh, your box set home or whatever of, of your show or movie or whatever, and you got the deleted scenes. And a lot of them are crap, let's face it. This, this, this is quality deleted this, scenes. This is quality here. deleted scenes. As this, written by this, Jenny uh, Hutchson and directed by Larissa Kondraki. This is an excellent scene. The trouble is, was twofold. The reason we cut it, because some of you are going to watch, some of the deleted scenes on here, you're going to be like, eh, well. This one, <laughs> this one, this one you're going to be like, this is a pretty good scene. Why do they cut it? But then again, I actually may be watching it, and you may, you may get it. Well, first of all, there's a very mechanical, uh, obvious reason, which is uh, we were overly long in this episode. And this scene uh, constituted an easy lift of over five minutes to help get us on time, because, of course, with a, with a TV show and ad-supported cable, you got to hit a certain running time, and you can't be overly long. So that was one reason we cut this. But another reason 
was that as good as this scene is and as fun as this scene is and as well acted as it is by both these gentlemen and well written and directed by by uh, Larissa and by Ginny causing problems we watched it in you know we watched the the, the, the whole episode with this with this uh, scene in and we were coming off of you got to remember the episode before this was 106 the episode one of the most dramatic episodes, certainly the most dramatic episode of Better Call Saul thus far, and one of the most dramatic episodes, counting all the ones we did on Breaking Bad. It was, of course, the episode where Mike, we hear Mike's backstory, and we see him get revenge on the two dirty cops who murdered his son, and it's just heartbreakingly, bone-crushingly dramatic. And, and this being the next episode after that, I think part of the worry here was... I thought of that, because, you know... This scene feels, as good as it is, feels almost borderline lighthearted. Would you guys agree with that? As far as, on, from Mike's point of view. It, do, it does. And it, it's, um, if we hadn't done 106, I think it would feel different. But yeah. it, it's just hard to picture the guy who we met in 106 letting Jimmy invade his space this way. Yeah. But and it's also... Leads me to believe that... It's funny because... Uh, it seemed to me when we outlined the story and when it was written that we absolutely had to have it. It's so funny that, that scenes that you struggle over so hard are able to, it really shakes you up as a writer a little bit that, boy, this could come out. And yeah. what you've struggled so hard to write and make good is just, your story can live without it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And it's, but although sometimes the struggle is that you're do trying something that, that doesn't belong. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're trying to expand a moment that doesn't need to be there. But I like this scene a lot. I, I do too. I, th- I think it's really well done. But the other thing that lifting it out does is it makes this whole scam with the, uh, the, the, the spray and the money and all the stuff that Mike does, it, it makes it a little ambiguous whose idea was it. That's How, a very good point. Maybe Jimmy was behind this a little bit more. And it also links up the money that Jimmy takes out of the box in his office with the money that Mike places in the toy car. Visually. Directly, visually. Yes, yes. And, and I, I can't argue with that, that great piece of music, that uh, the Chris Joss music uh, that Thomas found for us that, went, uh, that plays over both scenes. It just, it just, it's, it's interesting. It it just doesn't feel like we really needed it. Again, reinforcing that very good point you just made. If, when you watch the scene, if it were in the cut, clearly all Jimmy had was coming here was, hey, can you help me out? I got to get some money. I got to find some money and retrieve it. And it's all how to do it. The how of it is all in the wheelhouse of, of Mr. Ermintrout here. But, but as you just said, cutting the scene out, I am led to believe it was Jimmy's idea, and he just I had uh, Mike executed. Right. But that's up to you, the viewer, to mm-hmm. decide which way you like it. I think the thing that surprises me the most about taking this scene is I want to see these two characters together as much as I possibly can. You know, part of our theory with uh, getting shows down to time is instead of trying to squeeze a little bit of time out of every single scene, uh, once the scenes are playing really well, instead of trying to cut them short, we take something big out. Yeah, easier to make one big cut than a thousand small ones. This is a little uh, grace note that we took out of episode 107. It's a, uh, it's a nice little moment with Jimmy alone, uh, stealing himself before he gets to, gets to Howard Hamlin. But uh, didn't quite fit in the running time, but, but I really like seeing him here. Me too. I miss that little bit of him brushing the lint off. You, there's little things you wish you could keep, but you're on a schedule when you're doing a TV show. This becomes an issue of civil Hi, this is Tom, wow. Peter, and Vince, and we're leading up to a deleted scene from the episode Pimento. And what's happening here is that the judge is ruling on this restraining order, and we want to leave, some, leave it ambiguous as to which way did the decision go. Did Jimmy win? Did Schweikert win? And what I love is that Jimmy has this great burst of enthusiasm after we we find out he's won the decision. This is great for him. But and you I'm, gotta wait for it. I gotta, love how you gotta wait for it. You gotta wait yeah. for it. I'm such a huge fan of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest that I had to give him these lines uh, from the scene where R. P. B. Murphy uh, is pretending that he's lobotomized and then he wakes up and starts shouting to the rest of the lunatics. 
I love it. I love how you did that. Always steal from the best. That's yeah. always <laughs> yeah, great I love, movie. I love the way Bob works for the extras too. Yeah, that little B. Jimmy loves. Jimmy's got great taste in movies. This is Peter Vincent Tom, and this is a little uh, little piece that was deleted from episode one hundred and ten, Marco, and that was supposed to be our first look at the uh, the the depressed Jimmy. And here he is with uh, Sarah Minnick, who's you know our wonderful HHM receptionist. Wait, and he will not be dissuaded from seeing Howard Hamlin. You cut this for time, essentially. I did, and you know I also thought there was something more interesting about seeing him just sitting there already, like he'd been there for a long time. <laughs> 